What's going on YouTube? Erica Lynn here. Welcome back to another video. The garden is growing like crazy. We are in full fall swing here in Florida. We've already made a round of pickles and I come out again and we're already ready for round two. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing y'all how to pickle and can um, fruits and veggies so that you can store them for long term uh, in a pantry. And today, like I said, we're gonna be doing some pickles. So blooper moment, I just started filming all of me picking all these cucumbers and forgot to press the record button. So um, <laughs> you won't see them on the plants since I just picked them. Um, but here's some small versions. We can still see a bunch of these starting to grow up, um, but also a bunch of flowers that are gonna continue to give us more fruits on that plant and this one over here. Um, one of my favorite parts is seeing all the bees that come around. Um, this is loaded with honeybees first thing in the morning, um, which is really awesome. Some other ones that are starting to grow up here. Oh my gosh, I didn't even see that one. So let me try to reach back here and grab it. Holy cow. This is like the biggest one that I even have. I'm gonna add this guy to our pile here. Now let's go ahead and bring these inside and get started. Um, run down what we got going on. We got broccoli, tomatoes, peppers, beans, another round of broccoli, ground cherries, parsnips, carrots, onions, and squash. Um, we're gonna be expanding the garden here, uh, adding a few more barrels like we have right there. Oh, and I also have corn going on over here. Those are out about 62 days right now um, from when we planted those by seed. So a few more days and they'll be ready to pick. And I also have these gorgeous like 10 foot tall sunflowers, which have gotten absolutely massive. I'm trying to be as self-sufficient as possible these days because the world's a little crazy. And when you're cutting your dill, um, look for the first split and you're gonna cut right above that so that that's gonna encourage the plant to still produce two new stalks instead of one. So it just ends up making your plant really bushy. So we got our dill um, picked fresh for our pickles and we'll go ahead and get it all put together. So the first thing we're gonna do is get our can sanitized. I already have my big pot of water um, filled up. You do want about an inch or two of water above the jars once they're fully submerged um, in the process. So um, if you gotta mock it up ahead of time to see how much water you need to use, um, I'd highly recommend that. So anyway, it's got the water in there in my big pot that we usually use for stone crabs. Um, I just needed a big pot and this was the biggest size that I had above this that wouldn't have worked. I'm gonna go ahead and get that started. That's gonna take a minute to warm up. I'm gonna start on the brine because um, that's gonna also take the longest because after we're done putting it together, which is the short part, we're gonna let it cool off in the fridge. Um, so I'll show you those next steps in a second. So our brine here is gonna consist of two cups of water with two cups of distilled white vinegar and two tablespoons of salt. I went ahead and doubled everything. So here's the doubled version, four cups of water, four cups of vinegar to four um, tablespoons of salt. I definitely recommend the pickling salt if you'll be canning this for um, like shelf storage. We actually did a round, now that I'm thinking about it. So this is what our pickles will look like. Um, now notice when I mix it up here, it gets a little cloudy. Um, we had used regular salt at the time, um, which is perfectly fine. We're gonna be eating these right away. Some say it affects the flavor um, for when you're storing. Since I have you guys today, I'm gonna be doing things a little bit more by the book and using my pickling canning salt um, into my brine. Last time I did this, I didn't end up having enough and I had to like make some at the last minute, which is fine. It just doesn't usually have a chance to um, cool down all the way. And since we're gonna be canning these and it'll be a very hot process, um, I wanna try to keep the pickles as crispy as possible. So we're gonna make sure that brine is nice and cooled off um, before it goes in. Get this on the stove. Now we're gonna go ahead and bring that up to a boil. As soon as it hits that boiling point, we're gonna turn that off, um, let it sit for a second, and then this is gonna go in the fridge. 
Our goal here is just to get all of that salt dissolved. Oh my gosh, so I almost forgot to drop this in. So you're gonna want some sort of grate on the bottom of your pot so that your cans can sit on top of this. Um, you don't want your cans touching um, the bottom of the pot. So use something like this and everything can fit on top of that without falling over. So when the cans go into that big pot for the first time, um, you don't wanna have the lids on. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and take those off. Also another really handy gadget with this whole process is our little jar grabber. Um, I just picked this up from Walmart for 15 bucks. It is gonna do really well to get into that boiling water when we're ready. Um, so I highly recommend this, otherwise you can use some sturdy tongs. Uh, just be careful, I don't want you guys to get burned. <laughs> And it looks like all my salt has dissolved. So let's go ahead and get that on the process of cooling down. So I like to keep my seasonings really simple, um, especially for my long-term stuff, um, just kind of better safe than sorry, instead of some crazy flavors you're gonna be stuck with in a year. Um, so we're gonna be doing dill, red pepper, and garlic along with our brine. Hey, good man. What are you doing? I was just thinking to myself, I'm like, I feel like it's really dark in here. <laughs> it just smells so fresh. So as I get all these cucumbers ready for pickling, I'm gonna be cutting off just the very tip, just so that they fit a little better flat down in all my jars. Now I highly recommend that you take these out onto a cutting board. Uh, you don't wanna put it right down on the countertop. Now I'm gonna transfer these over with the water still in them. Uh, I'm gonna be dumping all these out in a second, but it's just easier to do it this way. I'm also gonna take this moment to take my brine, which is now cooled off a little bit, and put this in the fridge. So I'm going to take my garlic and split that up between the jars, like two or three cloves. Some of my red pepper and start working these into the jars. And you want to get them nice and snug and try to fit as many as possible because it's going to be close. Once I get all my jars, I'm going to top them off with a little bit more pepper and a little bit of dill. We got a lot of it here and it's fresh from the garden, so we like to use a lot of it. It looks like I'm gonna end up having to make juice or something with the rest of these cucumbers because um, it didn't all fit in my jars, but since I have you guys today, we're gonna stick with what we got. So if this is a great time to use a funnel if you have one. I do not have one, so I'm gonna transfer um, the brine in a few batches into my measuring cup here, and then I'm gonna pour it from there. So you wanna leave about a half inch to a quarter inch of space between your liquid and the bottom, soon to be bottom of the lid. Push everything down in there and rub the rim just to make sure they're nice and dry. Get in there. All right, once that's nice and clean, go ahead and put that lid on. Grab the other piece. And you're gonna tighten this down just hand tight, you don't wanna really muscle it because um, in this process you want, um, air is gonna be trying to escape from here. And if you tighten it down too tight, then the air won't be able to escape. So right now, you can obviously hear that there's air in there. After we're done, um, one of our main tests to see if it has worked is that that'll obviously be, able to be stuck down in a sealed position. You hear this? At the end, you did something wrong. Sounds like my water is boiling, which is perfect timing, because I am done. So let's go ahead and move these over, and we'll go ahead and start getting these in the water. I'm gonna set my timer. You can do this anywhere between 10 and 15 minutes. As this is starting, the bubbles are actually coming from the lid themselves, as that little bit of air that was left in the jar is starting to escape. Once you go ahead and pull these out, you're going to want to let these cool off for about 24 hours. After that point, you're going to go ahead and test your seals. Don't forget to label and store all your jars and keep on munching away until it's time to start your next batch. If you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Hmm. This whole time, I've had a flower in the back of my head.